Hello guys, so a few points really quick. Firstly, the lighting is a bit intense and that's just because of when I'm recording this video uh, and where the sun happens to be. Uh, secondly, I am actually a bit poorly still. I was on Sunday and it's kind of got worse for a while, which is why I didn't have any videos earlier in the week. And now I think I'm recovering from it, but I'm still not as great as I could be, which is unfortunate. Now, the only other thing I want to say is that there should be a link both probably here and also down there to uh, a channel that I'm starting, which is uh, KC2. And I think I've mentioned it as an idea before. It's basically just going to be a channel where I talk about stuff other than gender critical things. And one of the reasons for that is that it's become more apparent that this channel has kind of stagnated in terms of the number of subscribers that are coming in. It's entirely possible that I might get a sudden video which blows up and I get a lot more subscribers, but for a while now, it's just been a very slow increase while for a while it was a very quick increase. So that's what I mean when I say it's kind of plateaued. Now, somebody actually commented saying, hey, you should try to bring in a wider audience that isn't just uh, gender critical. Now, the thing is, for a while I did try this, but it basically created a situation where the gender critical people weren't that interested in my other videos. And of course, the people who are interested in my other videos were not that interested in my gender critical stuff. So I figured, why not just start a new channel, KC2? It will basically just be covering anything really that's not gender critical stuff, but is still kind of kind of commentary stuff. Now, I can't predict how popular this channel would end up being, but it would be kind of nice if it were a bit popular because that would ultimately expose more people indirectly to gender critical content. So if you could just subscribe to that channel in advance, I'd really appreciate that because it would mean that uh, I'd kind of have a, a bit of a head start, which would be very useful. Ultimately, it's become increasingly obvious that doing this channel full time would just never, ever work out financially simply because of the numbers involved. Uh, but even like part time is seeming less and less likely. So it's sort of at this point going to be a case of either I try to do other channels and see if they're maybe a bit more kind of viable in terms of the amount of people they bring in, or I just uh, try and find a full time job, uh, which will probably in the long run take more focus away from this channel than doing other YouTube things would. Um, and I am already currently looking for and working on applications for some full-time jobs. One of the ones I'm working on right now, which I'm the most excited about, would actually help with kind of working in conjunction with running this channel. But if I don't get that job, it's entirely possible I'll just have to go for whatever job, some kind of full-time job, um, in which case it would ultimately mean that I, it would be harder to get, for example, videos like this up as immediately. So ultimately it's sort of up to you guys and it's sort of up to luck. Basically if one other kind of YouTube venture I do ends up becoming more successful, then maybe that would be an option I can go down. Otherwise, you know, I will just have to try to significantly supplement the uh, relatively small amount of income I'm getting from this channel by doing something else. And of course that will take time away from this channel. Just wanted to let you guys know that. But yeah, I hope that intro wasn't too long because I'm sure you're excited to see me respond to Jammy Dodger on the gender criticals. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to jump in because I may have a lot to say. I haven't actually watched this video yet because usually I'll watch like a bit just to see if there's something worth responding to. But based on the fact this is explicitly mentioning gender critical people, it should have something in it worth responding to. So I'm just going to go into it blind. Uh, I'm not quite in like a mentality where I will necessarily give like the best reactions, but we'll see how it works out. <gasps> oh, uh. gender criticals. Am I right? You don't know what I'm talking about yet. Hey, it's I I know what you're talking about, just for the record. Um, but I do I do kind of like that admission that like that they, they know that gender critical beliefs are very marginalized and obscure and sidelined. Um, you know, sometimes, I don't know, like, I feel like in other contexts, Jamie Dodger might, like, buy into the idea that the UK media is filled with gender critical people and all that kind of stuff. But seemingly here, there's an admission that gender critical views are actually relatively unknown. Today, we're looking at a gender critical Instagram page that I found. Yeah. And if you don't know what a gender critical... Okay, I mean, this is fine, but it would be kind of better if uh, this was actually responding to the specifics of gender critical beliefs. Um, because when you say, when you title your video, the, the gender criticals, it makes it seem like you're going to be taking a slightly more holistic approach, looking at the actual specific beliefs of gender critical people rather than just one particular Instagram. But the Instagram may well be, uh, a, a, you know, a good Instagram, an Instagram that represents gender critical beliefs fairly. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that'll be the case. Critical is basically, it's just a slightly nicer way of saying a transphobe. The transphobes who hide it behind a certain view of being feminists and looking out for women's rights, but it's not, they're just transphobes. 
Okay, so uh, it's just another term for being transphobe. Well, the issue is, as I've said before, I don't think transphobe as a term has that much kind of analytic utility. Like, what does it actually mean to be a, a transphobe? Um, like, are we talking about just really disliking uh, the kind of what is basically an ideological belief that the categories of man and woman should not relate to the reality of biological sex? That seems like, you know, again, if you're going to say you can be bigoted against the kind of linguistic uh, characterization of certain metaphysical beliefs, I'm not sure if I can, um, you know, get on board with that. So, but yeah, obviously then there's the claim that in some way the relation of this to women's issues is insincere. And I mean, it's pretty obvious how that's not the case. I mean, you know, it's, it's a very kind of obviously intuitive argument that if you support feminism, then you're saying that to be a man or woman doesn't really or shouldn't really mean that much. It shouldn't mean anything significant. And I think the most obvious way to express that would be to say that it just relates to the material reality of your biological sex. Um, if you start saying instead that people can be men trapped in women's bodies, women trapped in men's bodies, can have a woman essence or a man essence, that being, you know, being a woman is expressing their true selves, you start putting a lot more focus on the idea that there is some kind of intrinsic value to being a woman or intrinsic value to being a man. And of course, I think a lot of feminists would disagree with that. And it's completely legitimate for uh, feminists to disagree with that. I think along the same lines as TERFs. I think it's now the newer term because apparently it sounds nicer. And not well, again, so TERFs is just another term for gender critical uh, people. You know, like basically the issue of TERFs is that it's been used in kind of such a dismissive derogatory way that just like any kind of uh, term used dismissively and aggressively to attack a large group of people, especially a large group of people who are marginalized and indeed um, women who have strong opinions about how the term women should be defined do seem to be marginalized a lot of the time. That's why a lot of people would say turf is a slur, because it's, you know, very reminiscent of the way that lots of people who have historically been marginalized and fighting for their rights have had certain terms, you know, aggressively used to try and uh, attack them and silence them. Uh, and of course, I mean, there are uh, gender critical individuals who for that reason believe in like reclaiming the term turf and to be honest i mean i use the term turf sometimes in my um in my thumbnails so uh, well not thumbnails uh, channel titles and thumbnails actually because it is a, a quicker term so uh you know like i think i have my video why is the uk turf island and one reason for that is because if you say is it gender critical island it just sounds a bit clunky not everybody instantly knows that these people are transphobic so yeah that's what we're doing today just looking at some gender critical memes and perspectives and just having a chat about them basically because we do like to dismantle the transphobia i i mean saying like have a chat about them that's a bit more reassuring um rather than just being making fun of them so let's see are you ready because i am not quite hold on Okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> a woman is a female body with any personality, not any body with a feminine personality. Okay, okay. like, I, I would just say, like, immediately to me, the logic of that makes sense. And it's pretty much actually, funnily enough, the exact thing I started off by saying, that basically, if you really want to have kind of a feminist conception of what it means to be a woman, then it does make sense to just say, well, it's about having a female body. You know, that's all it means. Um, it's not some kind of special thing. Now, I do think, of course, this opens up the opportunity to say, well, uh, it's not about your, your personality. It's not about feminine personality. It's about how you feel. It's about your true self. But the problem is that that doesn't mean anything. So you can't blame people for wanting to imagine that that means something and thinking, well, it seems like it's a logical kind of corollary. Um, I hope that's how you say that word, by the way, um, to, uh, to your personality. If you say, you know, if somebody tells me, um, that being, you know, them having a feminine personality is not how they conceive of themselves being women, then that's all well and good. But it's just kind of a little bit hard to take seriously when they learn to turn around and say that being a woman is them expressing their true selves and who they ultimately truly are. And the, who am I to deny their, uh, you know, actual reality of, of them being authentic and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's just a bit silly. I was charging my phone as I was talking. <laughs> that's not very professional of me. I feel like somebody thought, this was very clever. And I, I get it. I get it. Nice, nice, clever wording. But a woman is not just somebody with what would be considered a female body. Okay, so first of all, I do like the fact that there is an admission here, again, that this is actually a pretty intuitively obvious point. I'm interested to see how that intuitive point is going to be 
dismantled, so let's say. Yeah, with any personality. There's no prescribed personality. You don't have to have a feminine personality to be a woman. You just have to be a woman. And trans women are also women who don't necessarily have a stereotypical female body and were not assigned female at birth. This is just an alternative way of saying we think trans women are men and trans men are women, but without actually saying it in those words. So they kind of get away with it a bit. And well, no, the point is it is saying that, but it's providing a reason for why you say that. Um, you know, this is a bit like, I don't know, uh, I'm, I just have to give the analogy of like a young earth creationist uh, going through somebody talking about the fossil record and being like, this is just an alternative way of saying that God didn't magically do it 6,000 years ago. And it's like, well, yeah, sure. If you believe in your kind of, you know, ideology, which tells you this, this thing, either, you know, if it's that God created the whole world as it is now 6,000 years ago, or that there's such a thing as men being trapped in women's bodies or women being trapped in men's bodies. Well, if you believe that, then sure, you might understand anybody disagreeing with you as them just trying to, you know, just speaking for the sake of disagreeing with you. And I can imagine that you might even think that as people are just giving arguments for their position, it's just them finding another way around saying they disagree with you. But it, it's not that, is it? It's giving a specific argument against your position. Uh, the focus is saying, this is why your position is is wrong, because it creates this idea that somebody can be truly a woman based on some aspect of their character, based on some aspect of who they are. When, of course, that's not it. You're, you're a woman based on just the material reality of your biological sex. And obviously, I mean, you, of course, the response thus far has been pretty kind of um circular. Just, well, you're a woman because you're a woman, uh, which is... I mean, the, the only issue of that, of course, is that it, it is just circular, you know, it's, it's kind of unfalsifiable. And that's fine, in some sense, but you can't honestly like claim people are hateful, if they're not convinced by your completely absurd claim that people are just women because they're women. Like you don't have to, you're not obligated to defend your nonsense circular claims in some sense you know like i don't i don't believe people should be forced to have to defend their their claims in the debate if you want to believe something and you just want to believe it on your own that's fine but what you can't then do is claim that anybody who disagrees with your claim which you have offered no reasonable defense of is a bigot and a horrible person that's just nonsense and some people would read that and be like yeah women can have any personality without realizing the transphobic connotations of it i'm also just curious about the definition of a female body like I'm sorry, but like the problem is if there are transphobic connotations to that or, you know, transphobic connotations, then that's the problem of gender ideology. Like, are we talking primary sex characteristics, secondary chromosomes? Like, how deep are we going here? Wake me OK, and this is just uh, this is just kind of another like um, attempt to just needlessly complicate the reality of biological sex. I, I say needlessly because obviously biological sex, there are complexities to it. But the point is that you do not believe that those complexities are what validate um, transgender identities. You know, you uh, aren't claiming that, uh, you know, for example, you are a man because of the complexities of the, you know, the reality of my biologically male body. Uh, you're just saying you are because you say you are. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, it's just a kind of a red herring to say, well, actually, biological sex can be complicated too. Well, sure it can, but, you know, in a, in a very real sense, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Sure, you could say there are people who have such differences of sexual development that it can be quite complicated, actually, to establish, are they, you know, biologically male? Are they biologically female? Of course, differences of sexual development can be quite extreme. Ordinarily, they're not. And of course, um, you know, gender identity extremists will appeal to any form of uh, difference of sexual development to try and, you know, say like, well, look at all of these people who are, you know, intersex. Uh, whereas, of course, the majority of the time, differences of sexual development are actually, you know, not really meaningfully affecting whether or not somebody is perceptibly biologically male or biologically female. But sure, sometimes you can get really extreme differences of sexual development, which actually will make somebody appear what could be called intersex or, you know, basically a hermaphrodite. But the point is that that's not what you're talking about. We're talking about people who are obviously biologically male, people who are obviously biologically female, uh, and how it's accurate to describe people who are obviously biologically female as women me up when women aren't having to justify their need for male-free spaces. 
wake me up when the transphobia stops. Wake me up when trans women aren't having to justify the fact that they are women and not males trying to invade women's spaces. Well, of course they like they're going to have to justify it for as long as it well, for as long as they keep claiming it. You have to justify any any claim that you make. Well, again, you don't have to. You're free to just believe something and never justify it, but then you can't really get angry at people for not agreeing with you. You know, um in some sense, you know, do trans identified males need to justify their claim to being women? Well, I mean, if they just want to privately believe that, then I guess not, but if they're going to come out and start trying to affect policy, change policy, and of course attack other people for not agreeing with them, well, yeah, then they do need to kind of justify the claims that they're making. Uh, so yeah, I don't think you can reasonably uh, expect to just to be like, I'm going to go to sleep, wake me up when nobody's going to question the claims that I make, uh, especially claims which I, you know, really try to enforce very fervently. Uh, and of course, it's in no way comparable to women actually caring about their material concerns when it comes to their safety and um yeah there we go if you're worried about men in women's spaces focus on that don't focus on trans women who are just women trying to use spaces in society like honestly you're focusing on the wrong thing here and you're using trans women as a scapegoat keep well hold on a minute like men in women's spaces is well it is certainly a concern but it's not quite as much of a concern because most people recognize the idea that men shouldn't be in women's spaces. Uh, it's just a matter of how they're defining men. The problem is we then say, well, men shouldn't be in women's spaces unless they claim to be women. Uh, and a lot of people are saying, well, that's kind of just nonsense. Somebody shouldn't just be able to say, actually, I'm a woman and be able to go into a woman's space. Um, and the fact that you're admitting that it's legitimate, like you seem to be conceding here that for somebody, a woman to care about men in women's spaces is, is legitimate. You're saying, you know, if that's what you care about, focus on that. Um, as if you think that's a reasonable thing to care about. But you surely then would have to acknowledge the reality that, um, the only difference between a man and a woman by your own definition is their say so. So according to you, if I go into a woman's space as a man who identifies as a man, then it's kind of like, well, of course, you know, feminists should be concerned about that. Of course, it's completely legitimate for feminists to want to stop me, a man, going into their women's space. But if I just say, actually, I'm a trans woman, I'm, I'm a woman, I identify as a woman, then, according to you, now it's completely illegitimate, it's completely nonsense to be concerned about that. I, I, I just don't understand that, frankly. Prisons, single sex. Hashtag sex, not gender. Hashtag not our crimes. Hashtag keep prison, single sex. With two X chromosomes, are we going to genetically test everybody going into prison now then? What? Again, it's the classic appealing to the kind of complexities of biological sex um, in a way that's just a complete red herring. Because, of course, the problem isn't, you know, like, it's not as if there are all these people who are going, like, how, how do we tell which one are men and which one's women? No, they're, like, people like me, uh, people who are pretty obviously biologically male, there's no ambiguity to it, just saying, well, I'm a woman, so let me into a woman's prison. The, the problem is you are acting as if the problem is something which isn't the problem. This would only make sense if the problem was, like I say, that there was some, like, your justification isn't that it's impossible to know whether or not people are male or female. I refuse to believe that's actually what you think. Like, you think that the reason why biological males are being let into women's prisons is because you just can't tell they're biologically male. Again, there might be some very exceptional circumstances where it is really difficult to tell. Most of the time it isn't. And of course, like the 2X chromosomes thing, um, sure, there are uh, signifiers of biological sex outside of chromosomes. There's, of course, gonads and genitals. Uh and the other one too, probably, um, hormones. And, you know, that's, it, you know, there are differences of sexual development, which still allow for people to be unambiguously male or unambiguously female, while their chromosomes may not be XX or XY. So, yes, within that context, saying that using an XX chromosome as if, as if every single biological female has an XX chromosome is obviously not accurate but it's kind of just a symbol like that's the point it's just a symbol uh based on the fact that the vast 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 majority of biological females do have xx chromosomes
What do we do if people aren't XX, but you would have just assumed they were before testing? If we're going on that basis, uh, and I, I would assume I have XX chromosomes, but I'm not 100% sure. Does that mean I belong in a women's prison? I don't think so. That's when you're literally letting men into women's prisons. Daily you say that, but it's pretty obvious that you could be in quite serious risk if you're in a male prison in a very similar sense to the way that a biological female would be at risk. And I would also point out that this seems to be only logical if you're kind of assuming transmedicalism, because what your argument would seem to be is that you have had a variety of medical interventions to make yourself appear more male, uh, and that therefore it's, you know, kind of silly to think that you shouldn't be in a man's prison. Uh, and that you would, in, you know, in some way it would be inappropriate for you to be in a female prison. The point is that in some sense it seems like what's being acknowledged is that biological reality is actually a significant factor here. You know, in your case, you're just admitting that what makes you have a legitimate claim to be in a man's prison is the fact that you have gone through so much surgery and so much medical intervention that you are really similar to a biological male in terms of a lot of your secondary kind of characteristics, a lot of the uh, kind of external uh, indications of, you know, biological sex. But this is all quite divorced from the claim that simply identifying as a man or identifying as a woman is what should allow you to be in a particular prison you know, claiming instead that what should mean that you are considered to be a man is the fact that you've had all of this surgical intervention. I will say overall that sexual assault should not be happening in prisons at all, and there needs to be a broader effort to prevent those sexual assaults, but it's also completely legitimate for biological females to fight for their rights to sex segregation. And I would suspect that a lot of gender critical females would much rather share a kind of cell in a prison with somebody like you than they would with a lot of examples of uh, kind of trans identified males you could point to. Reminder, women come in all shapes and sizes. The only common trait is being female. <laughs> It's very clever in a way because it's posed as this inspirational message and like yeah women do come in all shapes and sizes They do let's share that message, but then it's the the only common trait is being female It doesn't necessarily sound transphobic unless you know that it's meant to be and trust me that this is meant to be stop Okay again, so basically here you have this claim that a, inc a message of inclusivity uh is, well, I mean, the, again, this is kind of the problem. There aren't actually a lot of responses to the arguments being made. The responses are just being like, well, actually, you know, this is supposed to be saying that trans women aren't women, or indeed trans men aren't men. And it's like, you need to respond to the actual points being made. And in this uh, case, actually, I mean, it's really kind of hearkening back to the fact that uh, kind of after... Uh, second wave feminism kind of had a bit of an issue with the fact that it was perceived to be focusing mostly on the concerns of white middle class women. Um, essentially, you could say feminism sort of went two ways. This is, you know, I'm, I'm simplifying things, but of course, like the whole kind of second wave, third wave, first wave thing is inherently a simplification. Like, obviously, it's not as if at one point every single feminist said, like, stop, we're going to stop doing this kind of thing. We're going to start doing this kind of thing. But in general terms, you could say that feminism sort of went to to be honest, like several ways, but just for simplicity, 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 simplicity. Why did I stick a whole other syllable in there? Um, for simplicity, it went in two different directions. The first direction, uh, first direction, well, actually it was, it was a later direction, but it's the first direction I'm going to talk about, um, which really emerged more in the nineties was this idea that actually the way to do this was just to make feminism maximally inclusive, just inclusive of everybody. And that would solve the problem of it only, you know, previously in the second wave, focusing more on kind of white middle class women's issues. Uh, that was that was the plan to say, let's make it as inclusive as we can. Now, the second approach was taken by the, the radical feminists, and this was more in the 1980s. And this was to say, well, let's make it inclusive by bringing it back to its root, Let's bring it back to the one thing that all women have in common, the reality of their biological sex. So essentially, 
it, it's really hearkening and obviously obviously the uh, image shared isn't directly kind of showing that thing um or, or making this point but it is hearkening to the reality that this idea that uh being a woman is being biologically female was all about uh trying to be inclusive it was actually all about inclusivity it was saying well you know let's include black women lesbian women working class women uh you know lesbian women whatever else let's include them all based on the fact they're all women and what is the common thing that we're going to point to that makes them all women the reality that they're all biologically female and the point is and i kind of made this point uh in a recent video as well inclusivity doesn't really mean much if it becomes so inclusive that there's no exclusive no exclusivity at all like you kind of need a little bit of exclusivity to make inclusivity mean anything at all if you just say that anybody can be a woman it doesn't matter well at that point you're being inclusive but you're being inclusive to what has now become a completely meaningless category you know you're just saying anybody can be this thing and it's like well what is this thing well this thing is nothing because you've just said anybody can be it if anybody can be something it no longer means anything and therefore it doesn't mean anything for anybody to be it the point is about, you know, what uh, kind of radical and gender critical feminists have done is they've made it so that woman means something, being biologically female, but they've stressed the fact that anybody who's biologically female should be included under feminism. And feminism should try to be really inclusive, you know, really inclusive of black women's concerns, really inclusive of working class women's concerns, really inclusive of, you know, I mean, I'm not going to repeat the whole thing, but you get what I'm saying. It's actually, it's pointing to the fact that it's not cleverly worded, it's just the reality that focusing on women's biological sex has actually historically been about inclusivity. It was kind of a reaction to, uh, again, in simplistic terms, but a reaction to the criticism that second wave feminism was mostly just focusing on, you know, like Betty Friedan and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I just thought that was worth stressing. And of course, I mean, the message more directly is basically just saying, you know, it's, it, it is of course an inclusivity thing saying, hey, you know, what makes you a woman? It's not but having a particular body shape that might be perceived to be kind of more feminine or better, whether it's, you know, skinny or curvy or whatever else. Um, it's not, you know, having less body hair or something like that. What makes your woman is being biologically female. And of course, that's inclusive in a variety of ways. And it's basically just a reminder that if, for example, you know, you, you are a, a woman who has, for example, a large nose, you know, lots of cultures have a large nose. And yet this, there's this idea that women aren't supposed to have big noses. Um, and Obviously, this is saying, well, actually, guess what? It's not your nose that makes you a woman. It's being biologically female. And even if a biological male, you know, uh, has surgery to give themselves a really dainty little nose, they will never be uh, more of a woman than, you know, some Italian or whatever, some Italian biological female who has a whopping great big nose, but she's still biologically female. So, yeah, it's just a, rem a reminder of what a woman is and to not let kind of society's screwed up ideas about like how a woman should look this particular way uh, to not let that kind of complicate your view of the fact that you are a woman or indeed in my case fact I'm a male. Stop putting males in women's prisons. Why have they made a cute little dog hold that sign? I don't That's think cute. the dog cares. And let's stop calling trans women males. L let's just stop with that. Why? It's just rude. Oh. Apparently biological sex is rude um i mean I, I don't get it though because like how can you then claim that you're, you're not denying biological sex because they are males and actually like males it's it's a the problem is this is the issue okay biological sex is a useful category while gender identity is completely useless so of course, people are going to talk about males because when you're talking about, for example, let's say things relating to sexual assault, for example, um, the reality of like the, you know, uh, biology is, is very relevant there. Uh, so of course, you're going to want to talk about males. Conversely, I mean, gender identity is never really relevant. Like, when does it ever matter? Like, when are you ever going to be like, we need to stop the people who identify this particular way from doing this thing? It's like, well, it kind of, you know, like, it doesn't really matter because gender identity is completely pointless anyway. You know, like, ultimately, um, gender critical feminists, in some sense, is almost like you could say they don't really care about how you identify. They care about the fact you're a biological male. And they care about that because being a biological male actually is relevant and means something. While saying that you have a, have a gender identity 
as a man or indeed as a woman uh, is meaningless and doesn't actually affect anything. So they're focusing on the fact that trans-identified males are male because that they're male is significantly more important than the fact that they are trans-identified. <laughs> Things that don't make you a woman, feeling like a woman, identifying as a woman, looking like a woman, being feminine. Things that make you a woman, being a human female. All right, so I'm going to predict what the response is going to be. It's probably going to say like, well, uh, it's not about being feminine while ignoring the thing about identity. And then there's probably going to be a thing about how like, well, being biologically female. I mean, who's to say who's really biologically female? Let's see. It's all about excluding trans women from women's space. Ah, oh, I forgot about it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Obviously, we're going to start off with the... Uh, not actually responding to the point and just pointing out that, of course, yes, if you believe that being uh, a woman means something, means something that relates to material reality, of course, you're like, I mean, all definitions are exclusive. So you just basically just do all you're saying when you say like, it's all about excluding. Well, yeah, that's what makes it a functional definition. Bases. And this next one, things that don't make you a man, it's also about calling trans men women. So things I feel like I wish I hadn't made the, um, I wish I hadn't even predicted that there would be an attempt to respond to some of the points. So, okay, yeah, let's let this one go to, maybe there'll be a response after this. Things that don't make you a man, feeling like a man, identifying as a man, looking like a man, being masculine, things that make you a man, being a human male. But I want to know the definition they're using of female and male. Because if it's chromosomes, mm. that's very muddy. I just... Oof, not a not a very clear cut thing to use but then nothing is because my birth certificate says male so although they wouldn't want me to be considered as a man i am a human male everywhere like look at all my legal document um the whole my birth certificate says male thing i don't know what's going on there um but like i mean I, I'm not sure exactly what that is if, like, we're talking about getting the birth certificate changed. Uh, because if you were observed to be a male at birth, then you you probably are a male. So I'm a bit I'm a bit confused by that. Um, because you know I would assume your birth certificate, where it says male or female, it's based on your observed sex at birth. So yeah, that that's a bit of a strange comment, and I'm not exactly sure what that means. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's entirely possible that a mistake was made. And actually, later on, you were observed to be biologically female. Um, and therefore, the fact that your birth certificate happens to say that you were biologically male is a uh, kind of just coincidence. I'm not sure. But significantly, yeah, obviously, you have this standard thing like, well, what's the one very specific thing you can point to that makes somebody a male or female? It's like, well, there doesn't have to be one very specific thing. Um, we can talk about generalities. We can talk about... Um, you know, being, uh, we can talk about gonads, genitals, chromosomes, uh, and of course hormones. Uh, and what is it all kind of centered on? Well, it's centered around the production of either large gametes or small gametes. So if I didn't have, if I found out that I didn't have an XY chromosome, so what? You know, I still have, you know, uh, the genitals and gonads of a biological male. Uh, so it's kind of like, there's, you know, there's no ambiguity to it, really. The whole idea that, like, biological sex is actually a binary is something which I can't really go into now, but I've made videos on it before, and I'd recommend watching my video on Vorsch, where I talk about um, the sex binary, uh, because I think that's that's a good video, kind of, like, uh, explaining it. But the simple explanation is that there's two phenotypes, uh, one around uh, the production of large gametes, one around the production of small gametes, and uh, basically all kind of human biologies, all human bodies uh, are actually can be quite easily placed into one of these two categories. And there are none of them which can be placed in like a, a different category. There's no such thing as a human body which has the capacity to produce a third gamete, both gametes or neither gamete. Um, so there we go. Quick clarification on the uh, neither gamete thing. Yes, there are obviously infertile people and things like that, but the point is that you wouldn't say just because a womb doesn't work that it's not a womb. Uh, but yeah, if you want like a better idea, I mean, check out that video or alternatively check out the debate between Vorsch and Avi because that will give you like both sides of the opinion. And I think that's, yeah, a really good thing to check out. So I'll leave a link to Vorsch and Avi's um, debate in the description if you just want to, yeah, check out like 
why it is that biological sex is a binary and that while yes there is ambiguity to biological sex it's not completely totally 100% of the time certain for the vast 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 majority of cases it is so it makes sense as human beings who just like to use language to communicate that we will tend to talk about um you know biological sex as if it's a kind of thing that can be easily observed because in most cases it can be like and all you have to do like just do not be kind of interminably online go out into the world think about in practice how many people have you seen where it's like you can't tell just what their biological sex would be and the answer is actually going to be pretty small um so there we go and you know obviously even in cases where it might be that you would get their biological sex wrong because maybe they've had kind of surgery to change things well obviously in that case that's still not ambiguity in, in the categories of biological sex that's just surgery being able to change things so yeah there we go accepting yourself as you are is the most radical thing of all okay so just to clarify we never actually got a kind of response to the claim that being a woman isn't about how you identify or being a man isn't about how you identify and of course that's the biggest problem because uh ultimately just identity is a completely meaningless thing to appeal to and that's why they don't really have any way of defending it um as for this i would just say yeah i agree with this uh, message basically uh yeah, it's, it's very inclusive. It's very kind of, um, kind of pro individual expression in a way to say like that being a man, being a woman, it's just about biological sex. But what you can be within that is infinitely varied. And, you know, you don't have to feel in any sense constrained by the reality that you're biologically female or that you're biologically male. And, you know, actually it's quite an affirming message to just say, well, accept the reality of your biological sex. Do you know what? I agree with this one, but not in the way they meant it. I accepted myself as I am, as a trans person. That's who I am. And the problem is you're saying this, but that's not true because like you can't say that you've accepted something when the source of that thing is just your own obstinate belief. You know, like if you accept something about yourself, surely it has to be an undeniable material reality. Uh, if you just say, I accepted myself, and what I accepted was exactly what my brain insisted was true. And it's like, well, that's not really accepting something. That's just saying, well, I'm just going to keep believing what my brain tells me because because my brain tells me it. Um, that's, yeah, that's not accepting yourself. Uh, that's actually denying biological reality in favor of continuing to believe something because your brain says it. The point is that a gay person, when they say, for example, deny that they're gay, they're denying a material reality, which is their desire to be in a relationship, to do whatever, with members of the same sex. Uh, when a uh, gay person, say, for example, sleeps with, uh, you know, say a gay man, sleeps with a woman, they're very obviously denying something about themselves in that moment because of the material reality of what's happening. So if they accepted who they were, they would not uh, have sex with women. They would have sex with men. They would recognize that that's who they are. That's what they want. Um, the point is, in this case, you don't have to. There is nothing you would actually do that would be in any sense denying the reality of your transgender identity because your transgender identity doesn't actually exist in material reality. The point is that actually saying that you were a biological female would not constrain you in any meaningful sense. You could still look exactly as you look, you could still behave exactly as you behave, you could still feel exactly as you feel. Um, and the fact that you are just acknowledging the reality that you are biologically female would not be in any way an impediment to that. So that's what people mean when they say you should accept yourself as you are, uh, that you should not allow yourself to be constrained by this idea of who you should be or that you're actually supposed to be this instead um you should just accept who you are and actually just live with that and just enjoy your life as that uh, which is of course a very kind of a message which lines up with gender critical beliefs definitely and i accepted that and i didn't want to change myself from being a trans person because you can't you can't make yourself not to be trans like you can't make yourself not to be gay I See, the problem is, again, this only works if being trans is something which exists in material reality, which it doesn't. It's just an idea in your head. 
Now, I want to clarify, gender dysphoria can exist in, in material reality, but gender dysphoria doesn't change the actual reality of what words mean. You know, like, certainly, like, gender dysphoria exists in the head just as anxiety and depression and things like that exist in people's heads. And likewise, you shouldn't deny those about yourself. You should recognize those about yourself. But that's not the same thing as saying you should uh, claim that you're in some way recognizing some deep truth about yourself. You say, actually, I am a man. I've been a man this whole time, just a man trapped in a woman's body. It's, it's nonsense. I am trans and I accepted who I am. Dear NHS Trust, here's a list of all the things I'm not. I'm not a vulva, I'm not a vagina, I'm not a cervix, I'm not a menstruator, lactator, incubator, child curator. <sighs> okay, this, the, the basis of all of this is where we're now using more inclusive language, which by the very nature of it, inclusive language can't exclude people. And where we're seeing things like Sorry, I just screwed that. Saying inclusive, inclusive, saying inclusive language can't exclude people. Well, that's not true because it in, in inherently excludes people who don't agree with that inclusivity. As I've already pointed out, in fact, since all definitions that are worthwhile are exclusive to some degree, it's true that if you then change your language to be more inclusive, you're actually excluding people who actually care about definitions having a meaning. So, for example, if you decide to make black the, you know, the idea of being black, uh, you know, racially, more inclusive by saying anybody who identifies as anybody who identifies as being black can suddenly be black. Well, the reality is that you're then excluding every single person, most likely black people, who think that being black should actually mean something and relate to the reality of you know your um, kind of race, uh, relate to the reality of your your skin color and your ancestry and things like that. So that's not more inclusive. <laughs> people with cervixes or pregnant people. So actually, really, the thing should just be, here's a list of all the things I'm not. Apparently, I'm not a person because gender criticals and other transphobes keep saying, don't say I'm a person with a vagina or a pregnant person. I'm a woman. And it's like, what? So you're saying women aren't people then? I'm not. Well, again, this is just a disagreement with the precise wording. Of course, um, these, you know, these people are actually this thing but they object to being referred to in that language because it's kind of, it's quite, it's quite dehumanizing, even though of course it's you may be using the term person, it's implying that the thing of significance is just having, you know, a vulva or whatever else having, uh, you know, that menstruating is the, the key factor. And it's like, no, it's, it's ignoring the reality of the kind of, um, the more holistic reality that these are things which are unique to being women. So it's just pointing out that actually uh, we shouldn't divorce these um, these experiences which are unique to women from the word women. Um, pretty simple. I've actually seen people actually reduced to being called a vulva or a vagina. That seems to be more what inclusive language is actually getting away from. We're not just reducing being a woman down to the parts you have. We're saying that there's a spectrum of people who can have these experiences and these bodies, and that's not all you are, but we're going to be inclusive of everybody who can have those parts to make sure that everyone gets the correct medical attention. I don't... Okay, so... Here, the, the claim is basically, well, there's kind of two claims. Firstly, that gender critical people in some sense are doing this. And the, secondly, um, gender identity extremists are not doing this. So regarding the claim that gender critical people are doing this, um, no, <laughs> uh, obviously we're not. Um, the point is, in fact, well, as I already pointed out, the whole point is that we want to say that, you know, if being a woman it relates to, for example, having the ability to reproduce, but you aren't a reproducer if you're a woman. It's not the same thing. Uh, so basically, we would, yeah, we reject using terms like that, which point attention to just one facet of being a female, that there are many facets of being a female, and that therefore, um, you know, yeah, we don't like that kind of reductionist language that just focuses on one specific thing. Um, that would be kind of the gender critical point of view. Uh, now, regarding the claim that, um, you know, gender identity extremists are not doing that, well, the thing is, you know, obviously there's this, this spectrum stuff. The problem is that actually you are because you're making that like the focus. You know, suddenly it's not just I'm a male, it's now, well, I'm all of these very specific things, you know, 
it's it becomes like and, and that's kind of the, the hilarious thing in a way like we do not believe that biological sex like biological sex is a spectrum that creates these kind of issues because it's like instead of just talking about being male or female we're now talking about like well how much testosterone do you have you know what what's the precise situation going on with your genitals you know like it's not just well i'm a male i have male genitals now it's well well how male are they <laughs> or whatever else you know it's like now my genitals are on the spectrum and and that kind of language is just it's it's not really very nice language actually to say that like different parts of your body exist on the spectrum when actually it's just you're a male or a female you know you don't have to place your i don't know mammary glands on the on the male to female spectrum uh and and come up with like you know you would therefore think perhaps that women with larger boobs are in some way like further along the spectrum than women with small boobs no they're all women um and that's just the issue like it kind of creates this needless kind of comparison um and kind of continuum where you are comparing people and you just shouldn't be uh and of course, you know, I've pointed this out. So the question is, uh, oh, the point, final point I want to address is like this claim that, um, like, that you need to just focus specifically on what bits people have in order to give them the correct treatment. So it's like, well, you just need to say, this person has a penis. So we'll just, you know, we'll call them a penis person. And therefore, you know, the doctor can know they're a penis person. So we'll just focus on the fact they have a penis. Um, or, you know, whatever else. The issue with that is that, uh, well, twofold. One, if that worked, that's what doctors would do. I pointed this out before, but nine, it seems like a lot of the time, what medical professionals want to know is, are you male or female? They don't care about the spectrum. They only care about, are you male or female? And I would suspect that the reason they care about that is because that's what matters. And I would further suspect that actually that's helpful because uh if somebody you know just establishing that somebody has a penis isn't really kind of a relevant thing what matters is the you know wider reality that they are biologically male and you know there's a massive difference between let's say a woman who has some kind of sexual uh a difference of sexual development which means she has a penis compared to a male who you know, has a penis because he's a male. And this is kind of something I pointed out before, that differences of sexual development don't actually kind of deny the reality of biological sex being a, bio, uh, a binary. It actually confirms it because it just shows how even when you have these differences of sexual development that allow for females to have, for example, a penis, it's still, there's a massive difference between a female with a penis and a male with a penis. Um, so yeah, just that claim I think is nonsense that you need to just use this very specific language to refer to like, having a, a penis or a vulva or being able to menstruate and all these specific things to actually help, you know, like do medicine properly. No, uh, actually the easiest thing is just to say well, this person's either a biological male or a biological female. I don't really understand why that's a bad thing. Stop telling what they've, they've made. <laughs> They made a fake Hollywood sign for this. It's really long. It doesn't work when it's more than one word. Stop telling women it's trans. I mean, I do, I think that's kind of funny. The idea of having like a really, I think it'd be funny if it was like, um, you know that you get that whole like kind of leftist meme, like ironically a leftist meme meme, where it's like, it's like loads of text, which I don't know if that's true, but um, I do, I do find that idea actually really funny. Like if it was like the Hollywood sign, but it was just, I don't know, the entire introduction to um, the, the transsexual empire or something. Or um, Helen Joyce is trans. I would like to see that. Just a Helen Joyce is trans, but it's the Hollywood sign. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's kind of funny. Phobic to care about female issues. That's not what people are saying is transphobic. People are saying it's transphobic to say that trans women are men and that trans men are women. There's just so many layers. Well, I mean, it's absurd to say that is transphobic because it's just disagreeing with how you're defining terms and of course you haven't given a good reason for why we should accept the way you're defining terms is of either accidental or deliberate misunderstanding of what people are actually calling out and saying that's transphobic and what these people <coughs> are then claiming they're doing it's like oh no we're really just like innocently doing this one thing oh behind the scenes yeah trans men are women trans women are men trans people don't deserve equal rights that well, the issue is, I mean, has, for example, J.K. Rowling ever said anything to that effect? I don't think she has, really. So, like, it doesn't seem like you're right in saying that um, 
there's always that thing going on behind the scenes, that nefarious thing going on behind the scenes. I haven't seen evidence of that in many cases. That's what they're really doing. And then they're putting out this message of like, oh, we're just concerned about female issues. Hint, hint, underlying message of transphobia. Women have had to fight for all the rights we have today. If men who think they're women want their own spaces, they're perfectly capable of campaigning for themselves. What has it got to do with women? It's not our responsibility. They're not having our spaces. <gasps> Tell you what, I'd like to see that on the Hollywood sign. Oh, it is true that women have had to fight for their rights. It is mm -hmm. true that women still face inequality in society. It is also true that trans women also face the discrimination and inequalities of being trans women. If we're talking about workplace inequality, a trans woman applying for a job is at best going to be treated the same as a cis woman, which in many cases is not equal to cis men, and at worst is going to be treated as a trans woman, which could easily see her not get the job or get fired from her position. That's just self-evidently not true, because if I were a trans woman, I suspect I could easily walk into a job and find that I would actually be taken quite seriously in a lot of cases, because I have all the advantages of being evidently biologically male, which gives me some advantages with regards to patriarchy, and I have the advantage of identifying as a woman, which gives me some, you know, credit as like a protected class and all that kind of stuff. So this claim that like the best case scenario for um, trans identified males is that they get treated as if they're women is just complete nonsense. Um, and actually like that's kind of offensive to like, you know, actual women who care about their rights because it's like, um, you know, to say like literally the best, like to tell women who have experienced so much misogyny and so much kind of nonsense and then for them to be told, actually, what your experience is like is like the best case scenario for biological males who claim to be women. Um, I just think that's absolutely absurd. Uh, and also, I mean, the other thing is like your whole point is actually not really contradicting the message of the sign. The sign is saying, you know, women are a particular group and they fought for their spaces and their rights. Um, trans identified males may well be their own particular group with their own particular concerns, so they should fight for their rights, but that doesn't give them a right to impose on our spaces. And you've pointed out, of course, that the experiences of uh, trans identified males or trans women is going to be, I keep tapping my desk for some reason, is going to be different from the experiences of biological females. Um, so you're actually evident, you know, providing some evidence for why it is that, yeah, maybe you would want to have two particular groups of people fighting for their quite different goals when it comes to their rights. So yes, women have had to fight hard for their rights, but shutting the door on trans women is not the right way to go about things. And do you also really think that trans people haven't been fighting and campaigning for their rights for years. <laughs> Let's not get into that. Well, the point is they're, they've been fighting for their rights, but they've been fighting for their rights, not really in opposition to the uh, kind of, well, a lot of the time, not in opposition to the uh, actual kind of real power structures of the society. And they've actually been fighting for their rights in opposition to women who have actually been struggling to fight for their rights. Um, so yeah, like I can agree that trans activists have been fighting for their rights, but they've just been fighting for them in the wrong place. They've been saying, you know, well, let's uh, kind of impose ourselves on women who are already busy, preoccupied fighting for their own rights. Let's get involved in that and try to take, you know, the small number of concessions they even have away from them. Trans activism erases lesbians. Well, only when you choose to erase all the trans women who are lesbians and it's just such a pointless thing it's like basically just going well i disagree yeah sure if you think that somebody if you think that i could be a lesbian if i just claim to be a woman then yeah sure uh you know you could say that somebody who says i'm not a lesbian is erasing the reality that i'm a lesbian but i think there's a pretty logical case to be made for the fact that it's much more reasonable to say that I'm not in fact a lesbian. Say they're not, and then start thinking that all trans men are actually lesbians that have run away from being lesbians. That's when you might kid yourself into thinking that trans activism erases lesbians, but in reality it doesn't. <laughs> it's just, it's so pointless because it's just like stating the beliefs of gender critical people 
but dismissively and then being like, but no, actually, and also you're a bigot. Like, that's the whole thing. <laughs> it just doesn't. I, I don't. I've tried to read explanations of why people think like this, and I, I just don't understand it. It does not make sense to me. Hashtag? Hashtag. I was called turf because I said that there is no such thing as a lesbian with a penis. Well, that's because you're saying that trans women, before having bottom surgery, cannot possibly ever be lesbians. So it's a bit transphobic. I mean, well, it's not transphobic, but I mean, you know, obviously by the technical definition of TERF, which basically, you know, is a term for gender critical feminist. I mean, it's, it's accurate, of course, that um, if you believe there's no such thing as a lesbian with a penis, then you obviously are gender critical. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's accurate. Everything is transphobic. And then the caption is... Everything must be taken away from women. Everything on this page is transphobic. <laughs> I don't know when it happened that trans people, particularly trans women, are now being blamed almost solely by certain people with certain transphobic views for women's inequality and for like rights being taken away from women. Although they say females, it's very unusual for them to say women when being transphobic. Um, sorry, I just want to clarify. Uh... The, the claim of like, it's almost solely focusing on, um, trans individuals. Well, it's not actually. The main reason it gets a lot of focus is because it's an area of a lot of contention right now within certain kind of otherwise like left wing progressive circles and things like that. Uh, that's why it gets a lot more focus. Um, so yeah, I hope that just clarifies that point. You can kind of tell that I'm like a bit over this video now. I'm also kind of hungry and it's nearly lunchtime. How peer contagion may play into the rise of teen girls transitioning. Ugh, like Abigail Schreier. Just a teen girl. Oh. She's talking about trans guys there, which is why I'm like shuddering at the whole teen girls thing. I mean, I don't know why you would react so negatively to just somebody using a pretty appropriate term to describe biological females. I mean, Abigail Schreier is not gender critical really by most definitions, but... um. Yeah, uh, I'm just wondering if there'll be a response, let's see. Peer contagion, this is rapid onset gender dysphoria. We know that's debunked. The W path have said it is not. It is not a recognised thing at all. It should never be used in diagnosis. It's just not a real thing. But yeah, that's the last one. Okay, so I mean, yeah, this whole peer contagion thing. I mean, I don't really know about that, so I think I'll just go easy on myself and allow myself not to comment at all on that, so... I'm guessing this is kind of the end of the video. I'm actually surprised at how little of an outro it seems like there's going to be. So, I mean, let's just let it play just to see if anything really interesting is said. Thankfully, we're done. We did it. We made it through the page. Let me know what you think of that. Remember, kid. Right, okay, yeah. So that's the end of the video. And it's the end of the video here. So um, please do like, share, and subscribe. I will again remind you, if you check out the you know new channel I'm starting, just I'm going to talk about like all sorts of stuff. You'll probably disagree with some of it. You'll probably agree with some of it. Um... It's entirely up to you whether or not you're willing to tolerate the stuff you disagree with, to listen to the stuff you agree with. Uh, I didn't want to just start uploading like other stuff on this channel because I don't want to like turn off, um, you know, like if, if you disagree with some things I say on the other channel, you could just unsubscribe in that channel. But if I started uploading everything onto this channel, then you might disagree with stuff I'm saying on this channel and decide you actually don't want to be subscribed to this channel, which I can understand, like, you know. I've subscribed to channels in the past where then I've seen them uploading enough stuff that I disagree with. I'm like, yeah, it's not really much point me, you know, being subscribed to this channel when like 50% of videos are just going to be stuff which I think is complete nonsense. Um, so hopefully, yeah, check out the other channel. It's entirely up to you. Uh, whether or not you want to kind of stick around um, based on like whether or not you agree with my takes on stuff. But I have got like several people like for a while now I've been having people say, hey, I would love to hear your takes on other stuff outside of gender identity. So that's another reason why I'm doing it. Uh, but yeah, please do uh, like, share and subscribe. Give them Patreon and I'll just say thank you to my current patrons. In addition to the name scrolling past, I'd like to give a special thanks to last month's new patrons, Helen, Jupe, Lyalynx, Ute, Jane, Nikita, Eve, Red Wolf, and Port. You're all very appreciated.